New York City considering a return to masks in the classroom. Well, this morning I go on the record with school's chancellor, David Banks. And Chancellor Banks joining me right here on Picks on Politics in person for the first time. So good to see you, sir. That's right. Good to see you outside of the squares that we've been in over exactly, the last few years. Exactly, right? Yeah. I'm kind of putting those squares behind us. Happy New Year to you. Same One year you. under your belt, and what a year it's been, really. Uh, so first, you know, let me get a full recap on your first year. How do you think it's been going? It, it was a complete whirlwind, Dan. I have to tell you, you know, it's really been one, one year. Uh, I was very fortunate. I put a great team together, and I've spent most of my time engaging parents and families and communities all across the city. Yeah. It's an amazing city. It's an amazing school system. And I think we're on the right track. I'm feeling really good. So you just saw what we were talking about, right? These health concerns as, as students really return now in the beginning of January from winter break. Young people obviously always at risk when it comes to what we're talking about here. In mid-December, a note was sent, sent out to families regarding students and staff wear masks. How is that going? It's not a requirement. Are you looking towards a requirement? Well, again, we, we always, we're always guided by what the Department of Health is, is saying, and mm -hmm. we work very closely with the mayor's office. And so they were very strong, you know, recommendations that were made. And, but parents have all the flexibility. They can do whatever they think is best for their child. Uh, I have not heard any major pushback at all mm -hmm. around the city. Um, and we're in the midst of the flu season, so everybody's, everybody's being very uh, diligent right now, but uh, so far, so good. Yeah, so, so far, so good. But if there was a call to be made for mask requirements, because we saw it in New Jersey, right? So sure. it's a real possibility. It would be the health department that makes that call, not you. Yes, absolutely. It would be the health department that would make it. I would, I would be the one officially saying as the chancellor, but we're, follow, we're following all the guidance from the, uh, from the health department. Okay, and, you know, and that's what we're talking about when it comes to RSV, flu, and, and, and um, uh, coronavirus as well. But I want to talk about this other idea of sick days that you kind of introduced here, this proposal <laughs> that would give students an option to take mental health days. Now, I think this is huge and so important to talk about mental health at the forefront of so many conversations. State Senator Brad Hoylman reintroducing this bill to give students this option. Where do you stand on that? Well, we're looking at it also very closely. Uh, we want to do everything that we can to be as supportive to the students and their families, knowing that we've been coming off this two years of this pandemic. The tremendous toll that it has taken on our young people is very significant. It's mm -hmm. more significant than I even appreciated as yeah. I came into this role as chancellor. But as I visited schools all across the city, I can see the toll that it's taken uh, on our students as well as on our teachers. And so we want to be able to do everything we can to be able to be supportive, provide the help and support. So we're working on a few other new initiatives that we're not ready to announce just yet. Okay. But, um, but things that will really speak to how we can be more helpful for young people mm -hmm. who are really going through real challenge, mental challenge, that's oftentimes very hard to shake. All right, so you're, so you're actually for, you're for the idea of a mental health day? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm for the idea yeah. of anything that really is going to be supportive of students yeah. and their mental health challenges. I do want to show right now and just warn everybody for some troubling video that we're going to show here. I want to pivot from health to some other instances that we've seen kind of play out in schools. And this was this uh, fight at the Staten Island School. And again, the video is troubling to watch. A police officer suspended without pay for striking a student involved. We'll play the video for you. Uh, and Mayor Adams said he spoke to you about the very incident. So what can you tell us about the conversation and will there be any repercussions i guess for the student involved in this matter we know the police officer is 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 being disciplined what well, is absolutely repercussions for for the students because the students were engaged in a fight now you know we don't ever want to see that but fights happen sometimes it was after school about a block and a half away from the school it was a troubling incident um and in fact i'm on my way out to staten island right now to spend time at the school and meet with the families and the principal and to talk about not only what was happening then but just some other general issues that we've been seeing uh, in that area and we want to make sure that we're prepared to support the school in doing what's necessary to make an improved school environment but that being said it was very troubling to yeah. see what we saw in that video you know somebody who's been in education for a long time uh, you know i've seen fights yeah. kids get into fights and we need adults to play the proper role in breaking those fights up. And uh, it was just troubling to see what happened. Just there. to follow up here, you said you're heading out to Staten Island because there were other issues. What are some of the issues you're seeing kind of play out that are troubling to you? Yeah, well, that that's an an, an, an area and a school that has had um, some other, you know, they've been more than they've had more than their share of fights. Okay, shall we say? And uh, and, and we want to see what we can do to be more supportive to help them in that in that way. Yeah, and, and you know, the mayor came out recently talking about youth in general. We're seeing crime numbers go up when it comes to youth. Is there education going on within the school system? Are you looking at kind of these conversations within the school system to reduce crime overall? Does it starts in school? Yeah, well, you know, we're always spending our time across our schools, uh, across the city, uh, talking to kids about, you know, the right kinds of behaviors and being involved in the, in the right mm -hmm. kinds of things that are positive for their own lives. Um, 
But, you know, it's the reality that sometimes kids are going to be engaged in negative behavior. Yeah. What we don't want to see is kids picking up guns and being engaged in in very significant levels of violence. Yeah. That is completely unacceptable. And, uh, and so we created new programs like Project Pivot, mm -hmm. um, which are really focusing on the, the schools across the city that we've seen some of the highest incidents of, of activity and, and kids being engaged in negative behavior. Yeah. Well, we've engaged community-based organizations to also come out and to get involved. The irony in this case is that we have a group that's been lined up they're starting their work next week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, uh, I want to talk about staffing and absences, both on the on the staffing level and also students. Right. There was this report that said that 30 percent of students have been consistently out of school, and there are 120 thousand less students enrolled than before the pandemic. Where do the numbers actually stand right now? Are you seeing enrollment at a, a level you're satisfied with and attendance? Well, I would say over the last five years, New York City school system has seen a loss of about 120,000 students, mm -hmm. 70,000 within the last two years alone. So there's been a precipitous decline in enrollment. So that's one of the major challenges that I face, which is to give parents a reason to continue to stay in our schools. And I think we have a lot of, of great reasons. Yeah. And one of the things that we're seeing is we're starting to see a, uh, uh, the, the number leveling off uh, now. Mm -hmm. And we feel real, okay. really good about that. We don't see... It's not a, a major decline of folks leaving now under this administration, right. but we still have a lot of work to do. That being said, we're still seeing the after effects of the pandemic. 30% of students are actually suffering from what we call chronic absenteeism, which means if you miss at least one day out of the month, you are deemed chronically absent. Okay. So over the course of the year, um, those days As add a, up, mm -hmm. and, and the kids can't afford to miss that many right. days of school. So and we have a lot of efforts focusing on that as well. On the flip side, there was a lot of talks of teacher shortages. Um, so where are you on staffing levels? Are you satisfied with those levels? Yeah, staffing levels, pretty, uh, for the most part, are pretty good. Some of the teaching shortages uh, reports that you've heard are really national reports. Yeah. In New York City, we do really well. Uh, we've got a very strong working relationship with the UFT, um, and, uh, and teachers here, by and large, do a really good job, salary, benefits, mm -hmm. pensions. We, we do a good we have a good package for teachers here so no we don't shortage. have we don't have any major shortages there's always certain areas special education teachers ESL teachers that we always struggle with but it hasn't changed because of the pandemic we're not seeing crowded classrooms because you're short on regular teachers no 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 that, that that's not the case and you know we have a new bill that was passed through Albany for class size right. uh, reducing reducing class size so we're working with the union on that as well okay Chancellor, good to see you in person. Good to see we you as well. We haven't had snow yet, but I wanted to press you on snow days. <laughs> you know, I'm always a fan of bringing a snow day back. Fingers crossed. Right? Fingers Bring crossed. A snow day back. No more we'll snow days. <laughs>